Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, mostly magazines, it's my weekly wrap up. So as you hopefully know, this month the Horror Mayhem reading event is taking place where we focus on reading short works of horror. Um, So one of the things I wanted to do for that was to read some short stories, but read short stories specifically from magazines rather than um, short stories from anthologies and things like that. I wanted to read some, you know, kind of really raw indie type stuff. Um, So I've been been doing a bit of that this week. Um, I've also read some kind of horror themed magazines which weren't necessarily fiction. So, you know, magazines about the horror genre or generally which have been really interesting uh, and then I have read a few books as well so I think I've got four books yeah four books I've finished this week um, as well as the as well as the magazines um, so I'm going to talk about all of that in this video uh, and then do the normal kind of thing I do where I talk about what's been on the channel and what's coming up um, before I do that though uh, let's talk about stats so um, as you hopefully know, I'm now tracking um, my books in versus my books out. So books in being new books I've either bought or been gifted or sent by publishers or whatever. Books out being things I've finished. Um, I am including manga uh, and these kind of magazine type things that I've been reading in those numbers. So my numbers this week look, look pretty good, to be honest with you. Uh, so I've had um, 15 books go out. So 15, I've, you know, I've finished 15 things across magazines, manga and books. Uh, and only five come in. So I think I've had one or two things sent to me uh, by publishers, and there were a couple of uh, Kindle deals that caught my eye as well um, that I ended up buying. So a pretty good pretty good week, to be honest with you. So overall for May, which is uh, the 1st of May was when I started doing this kind of tracking, uh, I am 41 books out, 26 books in. So I'm quite pleased with that, actually. It's better than I expected it to be. And then one last thing before we start. So a new thing I'm able to offer on Patreon now is free trials. So if you don't know, Patreon is a subscription service where people can support creators like me. Um, in re- in return for like a, a monthly subscription fee, you get additional content from me. Uh, depending on the tier you choose, you get merch, you get loads like bookmarks and mugs. Um, you get to, to pick a random book from the shelves, things like that. Uh, we have a, a Patreon book club we, we run every month where we read a book together. So there's various different perks. Um, and you can now get the first week free. So you can do a week's free trial um, and see see what it's all about. So if you, were, if you weren't sure uh, about taking the plunge and just wanted to, to try it, you can now do that for free with no commitment at all. Um, so the link to, to sign up is in the description for the video. Um, and it is really, really appreciated. It helps me to, to run the channel um, and you know, I'm I'm hoping that longer term will help me generate some income so that when I do retire, which isn't that far away, it's kind of in the you know it's it's in the visible future now, uh, so that when I do retire, I have a bit of uh, additional income on top of my pension. Um, right, so let's get on with talking about what I've read. I'll do the magazines first. So if you're not interested in the magazines, skip forward a little bit, but you should be interested in them because there's some great stuff here. So let's start with the fiction ones. Um, so two things here. Uh, so Midnight Tales. This is Midnight Tales, the Spring 2022 uh, edition, which is issue six. Um, so this is a um, a really nicely produced, um, pulpy, um, really enjoyable collection of short stories. So there's like I don't know, like ten or so short stories in here, um, all very different from each other, all really fun. I really really enjoyed this, and I've got another one of these which I haven't managed to reach yet, which I need to get to. Um, so just you know, the, the the thing that impresses me about Midnight, uh, about Midnight Tales is just the variety of stuff you get in here. So a really nice variety of different ki- types of horror. So, you know, kind of gross out stuff, eerier stuff, um, quite ex- some, some quite experimental stuff. So really, really fun. I'm going to do um, a review talking about all of these magazines in a bit more detail, uh, which will probably go up in the, in the next week or so. So, yeah, Midnight Tales was, was great fun. Um, also great fun was a cop detective magazine issue eight. Um, so this is, as the name would suggest, it's uh, short stories, but also articles, but but mostly fiction. So short stories 
around the theme of occult detectives. So occult detectives being, you know, investigators who look into, you know, the, the mysterious and the, the otherworldly uh, and the occult. Um, so a really entertaining mixture of stories. There is some, uh, some non-fiction in here as well. So there's a couple of kind of articles about um, notable uh, characters from uh, the occult detective subgenre. Um, but yeah, mostly fiction and really, really entertaining. Um, and again, a really nice mix of different things and a really nice mix of um, like author backgrounds as well. So, you know, certainly when I think of occult detectives, I think of, you know, kind of pulpy stuff from the 20s and 30s, kind of Lovecraftian types of stuff. But there's all sorts of different stuff in here. There's stuff that borders on sci-fi. Um, there's, um, you know, a really wide range of different types of authors and different types of stories. So, again, definitely worth checking out. Um, and I'll try and remember to leave um, links to where you can buy a cult detective magazine, Admin Light Tales, in the description for the video. Um, so those were the two fiction things I read. And then I read a bunch of non-fiction stuff as well. So I'll just talk about this um, a, a bit more quickly because I know people are, are kind of more into the fiction side of things. So um, I read uh, Pulp Horror number eight uh, and also the collected Pulp Horror, uh, which collects just use one, two and three of Pulp Horror. So these are both produced by um, a guy called Justin Marriott, who's a, an English guy who does fantastic work. I also read this by him. Uh, the paperback fanatic so just fantastic work looking at the kind of lost books um that you you know 20 30 years ago you would have seen in bookstores and secondhand bookstores and things like that um but which just you just never see anymore um which are, are often lost to um, you know kind of lost to history really um so these two, you know, very much focusing on uh, on the horror genre and some fantastic stuff in here. There's um, a really good interview with uh, Guy and Smith, which I found really interesting. So Guy and Smith, the famous British horror author, um, some fantastic articles and things like that. Um, Will Erickson, who you may know um, as Grady Hendrix uh, collaborator on Paperbacks from Hell, has got a couple of reviews in here. So all sorts of great stuff, really, really entertaining. Um, and then Paperback Fanatic is, you know, a bit broader in scope. So not just horror, um, paperbacks more more broadly. So a really good uh, article about like disaster novels, um, one about um, novels written by people who were in prison. Um, so uh, and some reviews as well. So some great stuff in there definitely recommended uh, and then also read from the same um the same stable as um midnight tales and i'm going to have to pos carefully position my fingers over the slightly saucy cover uh midnight magazine issue five um so this is um a horror magazine but with a broader scope than um than pulp horror so this is about not just fiction not just books but like movies and things like that as well so again a lovely mix of different things and things in here some some fantastic stuff like this where you get like, all these lovely old film posters um just but just really entertaining and, and written with a real passion for the horror genre um so if you like horror oops i gave you i gave you a flash of vampire boob there uh, if you like uh if you like horror and like indie horror and kind of low budget movies and stuff like that definitely worth checking out um but as i say i'll do a bit more of an in-depth video on all of these magazines um, soon. Okay, let's move on to books then. So the first one I read was The Fall of the House of Thomas Weir uh, by Andrew Neil MacLeod. Um, so there is in fact a short story with the same characters uh, in Occult Detective magazine number eight. Um, so I really enjoyed this. So this is a, um, a novel set in Edinburgh in 1773. Um, where Dr. Johnson and Boswell, you know, real people from, from history, um, although I suspect they're not particularly like they were portrayed in this book, um, have gone to Edinburgh and they get involved in um, investigating this like spooky goings on at a graveyard where um, the, like the, the janitor, or well, what's the word I'm looking for? The custodian or whatever, the guy who, who looks after the graveyard um, witnesses something horrific. Um, and the story just kind of spirals from there. This was not what I was expecting at all. I was expecting something maybe slightly stuffy, I suppose, and, and quite kind of leisurely, you know, quite kind of slowly paced and, and creepy and atmospheric and stuff like that. This, get, this book is bonkers. It goes all over the place. It's got all sorts of like weird conspiracy theories and things like that in it, um, you know, about the Masons and, and, you know, the Crusades and all that kind of good stuff. But even more than that, and some fantastic scenes of kind of horror action as well. So, yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this and, and definitely recommend it. 
Um, I then, I, I went into a bit of a, not a slump exactly, but I, I felt a bit horrid out. I felt, I think, like I'd been reading a bit too much horror and a bit too much stuff that was maybe a bit a bit more serious. So not so much in terms of the stuff I've spoken about this week, but in previous weeks. Um, so I returned to a, an old favourite of mine, which I haven't read. I haven't read any of these books for ages. And I was shocked when I, when I went into Goodreads to see which was the next book in the series that I needed to read. And it's been six months since I went, read one of these books. So I used to read one of these. So the Executioner series, I used to read one of these every month on the channel and talk about it. And I hadn't read one since November of last year. So anyway, I read the next book in the Executioner series, uh, Executioner 17, Jersey Guns by Don Pendleton. Um, Mac Bolan, not the name of the author, the name of the character. Um, so Mac Bolan is a, a guy fa uh, waging a one-man one, one -man war against the Mafia um, in the 70s, basically. Um, really good fun. There are literally hundreds of books in this in this series. I'm gradually working my way through them. So a you know very pulpy men's adventure book, um, full of cliches and stereotypes and things like that, but a, a lot of fun. I, I did enjoy it, and a fantastic cover as well. Um, and then kind of in a similar vein, or at least I thought it was going to be in a similar vein, um, I read uh, Gunman by Lauren D. Esselman. So this is a book I picked out to read uh, for June on the Rage next month, and then I decided I fancied it, so I picked it up. Um, it was really quite good. So let, let's talk about what I didn't like about it first. So it felt a bit rushed to me. So basically it's about this guy, and at the beginning of the book he's a kid, and by the end of the book, he's you know getting on for well probably kind of my age. So the, the book takes place over the course of, of a few decades, starts before the American Civil War and ends after the American Civil War. So it covers you know a really important and interesting period of American history, um, and a lot goes on in this book. So it felt a bit rushed to me. It's only like two hundred and ten pages long, and and I think you could easily have made it five hundred pages. And, and it felt at times like the action and the writing was a bit too dense. There was a bit too much going on. I, I could have done with it being a bit more spread out. Um, but there was a lot that I loved about this. So I love that, you know, the fact of seeing this one character and his progression over, over decades. There's some wonderful stuff in here as well about dime novels and, and the popularity of dime novels about gunslingers and outlaws and things like that in, you know, in the West, um, but in America generally at, at the time. And indeed the main character, uh, who's called Killer Miller, um, ends up getting, uh, having, having a dime novel written about him. Um, which I thought was a fascinating idea and, and really, really interesting. You see him like talking to the guy who's going to be writing the book and stuff like that. So uh, there was a lot that I thought was fantastic about this book. I just felt like it was a bit too dense. Um, but yeah, definitely recommended. And, and if you know, if you like Westerns, I would I would say this is worth checking out. Um, and I think Lauren D. Esselman wrote uh, some crime fiction as well. So I may check that out. Um, and then a couple of other things I read. So I read a short story that I've been meaning to read for ages, uh, which is famously disgusting. So I am going to do a whole video about it, I think, because I think it just about merits it. Uh, so the story is Eric the Pie by uh, British horror author Graham Masterton. Um, so an interesting, an, an interesting story, completely disgusting. So about a guy who just tries to eat everything he sees, basically. Um, and, and has an interesting backstory to it as well in terms of how it was originally published and things like that. So I will put up a video about that probably in the next week or so. Um, and then also read uh, another indie book. Uh, I've been sent uh, a, a book called A Bunch of Fives by an author called James Flynn, uh, who's an independent British horror author. Um, this was really interesting. So um, I will do, I'm going to do another video where I talk about a few different um, indie books I've read. So I'll cover it in more depth in that. But basically a collection of short stories, the idea being that they're all quite impactful. So, you know, hence the name, a bunch of fives. And there's five stories in the collection. Um, they weren't all great, but some of them were really good and had really interesting concepts. One in particular was about a, uh, a kind of near future where... Um, our obsession with like sharing things online um, has has gone to the extent that it is it's a legal requirement that everything you do has to be shared online, and it's about a guy who's kind of fighting against that. It was, I just thought it was a really really interesting concept, um, and and really well executed in the story as well. So yeah, definitely um, a collection I would recommend. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Um, 
at least I think it's on Kindle Unlimited, so do check it out, or it will be. It comes out in, uh, I can't remember the exact date, but it comes out in June. So when I do the fuller, the fuller video on it, I'll, I'll have all the details. It won't look quite so amateurish. Um, so that's what I have read. I'm now reading, so I need to, uh, I need to find a, like a physical book or a Kindle book to read, because um, I just finished uh, the uh, Gunman book this morning. Um, but I've started listening to um, another Western, actually. I had to do some gardening this morning, so I thought I'd find an audio book. Uh, and someone in the comments had recommended a book called The Cowboy and the Cossack uh, by uh, Claire Huffinger. Um, which I've started and it's fantastic. It's about a, uh, a group of cowboys who travel to Russia to deliver like, I don't know, 300 head of cattle or something like that to Siberia. Um, so it's a really interesting concept and just really enjoyable so far. It's got some great characters uh, and just it's just action packed. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. Um, so that was recommended by uh, a subscriber called Nunya, Bid uh, Nunya Bidness. It's spelt like that. I'm not pronouncing it weirdly. None your business. Um, so yes, thank you for the recommendation. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, right, so that's the stuff I've been reading out of the way. Let's talk about channel stuff. So I did a, um, a video in the last week where I talk about the books I'm planning on reading for June on the Range. Since making that video, um, A, people recommended and made suggestions in the comments on that. And I've also had some thoughts myself. So actually, I think I'm going to be reading different books for June on the Range, but I will do a... Um, I'll do a, a June TBR video in the next week or so um, and talk about what those books are. Um, I am also, uh, I've, so I've had a couple of review videos go up, so slightly atypical ones, I guess, for the channel. So a review of The Princess Bride by William Goldman um, and also Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, and then I also did a review, uh, or not a review, a video on things I won't do on the channel. So just kind of my ethos for how I run the channel. Um, and also did uh, an Abominable Book Club unboxing um, video. Um, and then in the week ahead, and I've said I'm going to do um, a video about the horror magazines I've read. Uh, I'm going to do my June TBR video probably. Um, I'm going, I'm tr I want to do a video about out of print authors. Um, but I haven't quite got my head around exactly what I want to say yet. So that may come up soon. Um, and then I'll have my manga video on Monday, um, if you like manga stuff. Uh, and also, as I've said, a, a video about the short story, Eric the Pie by Graham Masterton. So hope you found that interesting. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books I talked about or indeed the magazines. Uh, let me know what you've been reading this week. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.